the only Indian woman to be featured in the 50 most influential list of Bloomberg markets, Arundhati Bhattacharya first made headlines when she took over as the first woman chairman of India's biggest bank, the State Bank of India. Today, this 208-year-old bank employs over 290,000 people in more than 15,400 branches across India. So when I caught up with the chairman of SBI, I began by asking her what takes up most of her time. If you ask me what really takes up most of my time, most of the time would be taken up in ensuring that, you know, the various parts that move, that they move in, synch in synchronization, uh, that they are well synchronized and that at the end of the day we each understand what the other one needs. And therefore, you know, there is more of a collaborative style uh, of delivering results rather than you know trying to do things in silos which often happens in a large organization of this sort. Mm -hmm. So you constantly need to check back to see that people are in step and uh, the goals that we need to achieve are known and uh, people are working all of them are working towards the same thing. What is interesting about you is that you've taken uh, some of the most critical uh, leadership roles within the bank uh, but actually if you go back to your training you studied literature. I mean, I have n never met a literature graduate or a postgraduate <laughs> who became the CFO of the biggest bank and now the chairperson. I mean, that's that's as diverse as you can get. So, um, starting out, did you ever think you'll be here? And what has the journey been like? Uh, no, not really that I ever thought that I was going to be here. Uh, but uh, the, when we joined in uh, State Bank of India, the norm was to join at the staff colleges. So all of us joined in State Bank of India Staff College in Hyderabad. Let me tell you, it was a great experience, absolutely great experience. And we had a lot of people coming and speaking to us, the top management. And all of them told us that we were exactly like you. We joined at your level and this is where we have got. So this is an organization where you can go right to the very top if you can make it. And therefore, I don't think there was anybody in that room who didn't think, wow, so then I could be the chairman too. So, you know, that kind of a thought I'm sure would have occurred to all of us in those rooms, uh, in those classrooms. So, I think uh, but, but, uh, similar you know, the, the, the fact that, to me as well. Yeah, the fact that you did your master's in literature, that you did your post-graduation in literature, you, you were not really planning a career in banking. Uh, it, not it, it happened. really. Actually, what happened was I had uh, science in school as well as what we used to be called advanced maths then. When I went into college, I qualified for uh, those, were th that was the first year of the joint entrance. And I was very interested in medicine as well. So I qualified for uh, a seat in the medical college, uh, in Calcutta Medical College. But in those days, because of the uh, Naxal problems in Calcutta, all the courses were very badly delayed. And my father was to retire in three months time. Those days, though my father was an employee with SAIL, they didn't have pensions and also he was not very keen on me going into medicine which requires somebody to be supported for eight, ten years. So, and I had, I was also very good in literature. And the principal of my school, a person whom I really revere and love, uh, he, he was a Jesuit priest, Father John Moore, who set up our school. He told my father that she is extremely good in uh, communication and she should do something in that area. And that is how I got into English actually. Though, you know, I think uh, the fault is more in the educational system in the sense that you can't do maths and English both. So you had to do, if you do English, you become an uh, arts graduate. You can't do a subject which could just as well be a science subject. So that being the case, that is how I got into literature. Uh, but uh, having said that, uh, means, uh, as I said, one of the major uh, major advantages I think that you need in any organization it doesn't matter whether it is banking or anything else is the ability to communicate if you are a good communicator either in writing or verbal it is always a major strength and I think you know that has stood me in good stead but you know what is interesting is how the PSUs have been a great platform for women to come up uh, what do you think uh, it is because of because if you look at the size of SBI, you've got over two hundred thousand employees. Twenty percent are women, which is not a bad statistic at all. Given if you look at it in comparison with other companies, what's worked? What what has worked in allowing everybody to come up? I think there are two things in PSUs. One, of course, is the fact that PSUs probably are a little more sensitive uh, towards the needs of people, and uh, they don't make a big uh, production 
out of allowing people a little bit of a leeway. Uh, leeway meaning, for instance, you know, if you need to be with your spouse to allow you a transfer to that place or if you need to, for instance, currently we have also allowed people to take sabbatical should they need to look after their children or uh, sick parents and stuff like that. The other thing in PSUs, I think, is that uh, there is a very level playing field in the sense that uh, in uh, pr promotions and postings, things are way more transparent than I think they are in the private sector. In the private sector, you cannot really question. Means, of course, you are given feedbacks and things like that, but you cannot question the uh, the um, steps that are taken, especially in the personal area, especially in the area of postings and things like that. Whereas in the PSU, you know, things are really uh, much more transparent and open. And therefore, if you are a good performer, uh, there is really no reason why you can't go up. But of course, on, on the flip side, you also have many, many transfers. Yes. And it could be posted all over. And you've had a fair amount of postings. How difficult is that? And you see a lot yeah. of women fall out. I, Actually, I that is that. very true. That's very true. But you know, in a pan-India organization like the SBI, it is necessary to be able to move to other parts of the country. Frankly, I have always found it very interesting. It's been difficult, but it's never very, it's never impossible. And in fact, I keep telling my colleagues, you know, that uh, people become uh, better if they face challenges. Today's children uh, because of the fact that you know our disposable incomes are much more than when we were children because the standard of living in India has gone up. Today's children have very few challenges. So if you challenge them by changing their schools every once in a while, it's a synthetic form of challenge, but it will make them better people. Better people, I don't know, you yourself say that you were in the military. So you yourself have had to change schools. Now changing schools, it makes you uh, learn the way to make friends makes you, uh, you know, capable of making compromises, of understanding how different people behave, how different uh, communities act, the different cultures, the different religions, the different food. And really, you know, it is a challenge to sort of fit yourself in into a given situation, a situation that is already present. And I think these things actually stand you in very good stead in later life. Career spanning over 37 years in SBI, Arunvati Bhattacharya has been responsible for setting up several new initiatives, including some of the biggest joint ventures at the bank. So, what were the turning points in her career? One, of course, was when I got posted to New York. Uh, it was a really great experience. First of all, being in the in a financial center that is so vibrant and so alive and uh, dealing with uh, regulators which who were really at that point of time you know the kind of uh, um, uh, diligence and the kind of uh, uh, the kind of supervision that they used to exercise even in those days it's a huge learning experience so i think that was one the second was when i came back and i was in uh, the treasury and uh, the looking after the forex treasury it was very comfortable position because you know um, after all treasury is more like a back office job for your own own organization but from there i got posted to eastern up mm. and that again was a major major change and uh, a very big challenge because eastern up again is uh, a area which uh, is not very well connected by uh, train or air not connected at all by air so most of the travel was by road and also because the economy there was not doing well. Therefore, you know, there was a problem of NPAs. On the other hand, you also had a problem of achieving top line growth. So for even a 100 crore business, the amount of effort that we would need to make, absolutely humongous. 
But not only that, the people and how to guide them into doing things better. I used to be on the roads of UP at 2 in the night also. A lot of people have told me it's very dangerous, this, that. Anyway, by God's grace, I never had any mishaps. And uh, it was a huge learning experience. It means going back to the roots, so to speak. Very big learning experience. After that, again, I got into a very, uh, means in fact, uh, all my assignments from that period onwards have been very challenging, very different, and I have learnt a lot. In fact, uh, for the record, you've, you've been uh, involved and uh, spearheaded some of the biggest joint ventures for the bank. Uh, my point is that uh, somewhere, a lot of you who are successful have also had an entrepreneurial role to have played in the organizations that you worked for. I mean, if you speak to Chanda or Shikha or to you, you you've driven a lot of the new projects within the banks that you've worked in. Has it helped in, in your position now? Yeah, definitely it has helped, you know. It's helped by making you feel uh, confident about being able to do things. Because when I came in as a CGM of new businesses, uh, we had a number of businesses that we could go into. So it was a question of determining, do I want to go into it? If I do, then do I do it from inside the bank? Do I do it outside? If I do it outside, do I have a joint venture partner? If I have a JV partner, who should be that partner? And thereafter, you have to take decisions about what should be the policies, what should be the business plan, how do you recruit people, who are the people you recruit. Once you get them on, for instance, in any of the joint ventures, we'd have people from the joint venture partner, we'd have people from inside SBI, and we'd have market recruits. So there would be three classes of people. And how do you meld them all together in order to deliver what you need to deliver? The joint venture agreement itself that you negotiate with your partner, that itself uh, takes a lot of skill. And it is a lot of learning again. And as I said, you know, if you do these successfully, definitely it gives you a lot of confidence that if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. So yes, it in helps. In a sense, because you were pioneering new areas, you were in an organization that was, you know, uh, part and parcel of India's growth story. Do you think women of your generation had far bigger challenges and opportunities hence and that you rode the wave and do you think the same thing is applicable now? See the waves will keep coming you know the waves don't stop so you can always ride a wave and uh, what happened actually when we uh, joined the financial sector was that the financial sector was just opening up and uh, there were a lot of recruitments and women suddenly realized that this is one area where you could have a decent career and probably your parents also thought you know that uh, you would be sitting inside a office and therefore you know it's a decent career to get your daughters into and therefore they also they didn't, didn't expect you to be driving around east <laughs> 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 they didn't, <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> so i think you know yes at that point of time definitely it was an opening up for women at least it's remained that way. So, you know, I don't see any reason why women cannot make it even subsequently. And uh, a lot of women still do join. But what I remain worried about, and I think it was the same in our time, and it is still the same, is the fact that many of these women drop out during the entire career. And they drop out in India specifically because in India, women continue to be the primary caregivers. They are expected to keep regular hours. They are expected to really hold fort if there is a crisis at home. And these are things, if they have to do, uh, then, you know, very often they are not confident that they can carry out the other role equally well. And that is one of the reasons why they drop out. So we have to sort of assure them that they can do both. So I'm going to ask you two questions. One, of course, you were also heading the HR function in SBI. So, and you've done a lot of work out there. So I want to talk about that. But on a more personal level, how did you manage? Because you also have a daughter. Uh, I, I've read somewhere that when, for instance, I don't know whether it was the same Lucknow posting, but when you went to Lucknow, there was a point when you almost gave up on your career and you, you know, your, your mentor told you, don't do that. And, and from there, there was no turning back. Tell us about that. And what were your own internal challenges? Now, actually, in Lucknow, the problem was, you know, I was not too sure that I would get the right kind of school for my daughter. And that was when I was uh, a little worried. I wanted a bigger uh, center posting and I was told that no you need to go and sort of uh, do this posting uh, and of course you know as I said when I went into Lucknow I found that my fears were quite quite unfounded we had a very good school over there so absolutely no issues uh, but um, as I said you know you have to make compromises and it is not only you 
uh, the family, the spouse, uh, the children, they all have to make compromises. So unless everybody is uh, willing to do it, and if there is a lot of headwinds, then it becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, really speaking, you know, while we have made compromises, all of us have difficulties, but I didn't have those headwinds to battle against. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, I have been very lucky. Uh, I have also been very lucky to get a uh, proper caretaker who has been able to look after the house and things like that. But uh, I believe you know that most of us, if we are really and truly uh, interested in doing something, uh, the ways uh, sort of opens up before you. Uh, you don't really have to uh, make so such difficult decisions. family support is very decisions. important and then subsequently if you have the will, you are saying that you can find a way to do it. Exactly, exactly. And looking back, do you think a lot of women don't take those tough post things, those tough things and it, looking at your own career, do you think it's imperative that you went through that uh, and looking back if you hadn't, would it be different? No, I fully agree with you. A lot of women would prefer protected postings because you know they feel they won't do justice mm -hmm. if they take up a posting that takes up a lot of their time mm -hmm. and therefore they do you know suffer because of that because these operational postings as they are called line postings. If you don't do line postings, it's very difficult even in an organization like SBI to get ahead. So women who are interested, they will need to do these line postings and that often means that you stay separately from your families or that your spouse stays in a separate place and you have the children with you. It is important to be able to do that because again, if you don't take those challenges, you are not going to get ahead. That's also a fact. conversation has the woman issue come in honestly uh, ma'am because you you've spoken about you know the challenges of leadership the challenges of making your way through a career but let me ask you does the fact that you're a woman help you when you when you deal with unions etc are you more empathetic than uh, than others and could that be an advantage and what are the advantages that you perhaps have had as compared to your male colleagues well, I don't know exactly um, that probably people around me would be able to opine better on that. But I have been told that I have good EQ. So maybe the EQ uh, is something that uh, helps. Uh, being empathetic, well, yes, of course, means being a woman. I think one good thing is uh, I listen well. And I think that's something that we have done for hundreds of years. So it's a role that we automatically can do. And if you listen well, you probably can catch nuances which you don't if you uh, don't listen well. So I think that's uh, an advantage as well. So probably these are the two things that have helped me. You've also driven a lot of the women-centric uh, uh, you know, policies within SBI. Take us through how the, the learning has been and what the learning has been and how the way SBI treats women has changed over a period of time since the time you joined to now and what does it reflect of the changing uh, times? See, even when I joined, uh, it is not as though uh, the bank was not at all sensitive to the women's requirements. For instance, my husband was in Kharagpur. So I got posted to three branches in Kharagpur, one after the other, so that I could remain in the same vicinity. So this is something that the bank has always done. It's not something that is new. It becomes a little difficult now because those times the number of women were small so they could be accommodated. Now the numbers are much bigger, so the accommodation is difficult to make. But having said that, I think, you know, over a period of time, we have tried to ensure that there is, um, there is fairness in the way we deal with women. Secondly, as I told you, I continue to remain very um, worried about the fact that a number of women fall away as they go up in the career. And we have found that they fall away normally at three points of the career. One is during the childbearing years. The next is when the child is in class 10 to 12. Because as you know, in India, it makes a very big difference where you get in after class 12. And that 10 to 12 is a period when children are not only studying, uh, doing their schooling, but they are also doing several other tuitions and courses and stuff like that so as to enable them to get into the 
uh, the, through the joint entrance examinations for colleges. So that is another period when it is a period of stress and many women like to take a break then. And the third is when either the parents or parents-in-law fall sick. Again, nobody to look after them and they need to be at home. So that is the reason why we started the sabbatical of two years, which could be taken for either for the child or for uh, people who need uh, home care. And uh, they can take it three times in a whole career. Mm, we have, by the way, extended it to single men as well because they have the same challenges. So mm, we've done that as well. And we believe, you know, that somehow or the other we have to ensure that women can get back into a career after taking a break. That's the only way we will enable them to stay on. But having said that, if you really want a career to, uh, to, um, to be able to reach the top of the career, uh, taking a break would be a difficulty because getting back into the same space again and uh, getting back into the race, so to speak, is always very difficult. On the whole, what do you think it takes for women to succeed? You know, uh, do you think women have to plan harder? If you were to look back in your own life, do you think uh, it was because of the roles that you took? Well, what are the three, four things that you attribute your success to? See, one thing is, of course, you know, as a woman, you must have a good support structure. And sometimes you have to work towards creating that structure. And uh, I continually tell my people that just be kind. You don't have to do anything more. Because if you are kind and if you are good to people without any uh, expectation, when you need them, they'll be there for you. Okay. So I think that is very important. Second is you need to be a team player. You cannot afford to be indispensable. Because if there will be times when you'll have to drop and run, be it in the house or be it in the office. So even in the house, you know, if you don't have somebody who will back you up, if you have to attend an important meeting or if you have to go for something or the other, it's going to be a disaster. Same in the office. There would be time when somebody is very sick, you need to just cut and run. There has to be somebody who will take up the slack. So you need to be a good team player. Uh, and for that, I think, you know, many people, they have a sense of uh, insecurity, which doesn't uh, allow them to share everything and allow people to sort of move together. So I think, you know, we should reduce our senses of insecurity, feel more secure in it, and then allow people to take the lead wherever it is necessary, but be a team player. That I think is also very necessary. The third thing is we should take up challenges. If you continue to doubt yourself and continue to not have faith in the fact that you can do it, then it's very difficult for anybody to push you forward. Even if you have mentors and all who are willing to sort of help you, if you don't help yourself, you know, nobody can really help you. So I think that's also very important. What would you say about attitude of women to, to their careers? I mean, do you think somewhere women give up too easily? Is that also a problem? As I told you, you know, there, there is always a doubt. Can I do both? And because there is a doubt, because there is this feeling of guilt, it's easier to sort of cut one out and feel more comfortable. But I don't really think they feel comfortable. They always have a lot of regrets. I know women who have been excellent uh, of, um, officers who have dropped their career in between because they felt that they needed to really be at home and uh, help out in the family. They have always got very deep-suited regrets. And in fact, many of them felt so glad when I made it, merely because, you know, they felt that, you know, they could have done the same had they not uh, uh, sort of dropped out. So I think that feeling of regret is very genuine for even for those people who drop out. Last set of questions. Of course, um, SEBI and the Companies Act mandates uh, women on board. If there is one thing that we could do in the next five years to get, encourage women to naturally come into the boards, what would it be? What would be the one thing would be for them to actually actively look for these things. See, one of the reasons why women don't get these positions is because they don't network. Getting into board positions is, uh, is a function of having good networking. It's normally the network that recommends that this person is good and you should have him on the board and their uh, contribution is good. Women don't have this network. And therefore, I think one of the major things that we need to do is to start this networking. It's very important. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.